It is Wednesday, September 12, 2018. This is video number two from the Sneed Mobile Tech YouTube channel. Video number two for the day. Uh, had to give you this video, I told you I would. We have some new iPhones that launched today. And I'm actually gonna cover a lot of what was mentioned in today's uh, launch event for the new iPhones. We got a new Apple Watch, uh, a bunch of stuff going on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run through some of the things that were important from today's announcement. So we start with the iPhone naming scheme. We have the iPhone 10s, the iPhone 10s Max. Now those are going to be available shortly. You can pre-order those, pre-order those as of September 14th, and in-store available September 21st. The one phone that was not mentioned until the very, very end was the iPhone 10R, which I'm going to get to that shortly. So the iPhone 10s and uh, 10s Max going to be 5.8 inch displays. Uh, 6.5 inch display on the larger one. Uh, in terms of cost, uh, we're looking at some pretty pricey phones. The XS is going to be uh, for a 64 gig version, 999 bucks, 256 gig at 1149, and 1349 for the 512 uh, gig storage. And the larger phone, the uh, the 10s Max or XS Max, 1099 for a 64. 1249 for a 256, 1449 for the 512 uh, gig storage option. Now they are both going to support eSIM, which is great news. So they'll have the eSIM in slot number one, and they are dual SIM. So the other SIM card will be for a physical SIM card. Um, it will support dual SIM. Now China's the exception. They'll have dual physical standard SIM card slots. So they won't have the eSIM support. Uh, the focus of the announcement, they pretty much spent the whole entire time talking about the A12 Bionic chip, which I believe paired up with four gigs of RAM. Uh, first iPhone to have a seven nanometer process in the build of the chipset. Apple says they're the first company to do this. Well, actually Huawei just did it. So they weren't the first, but you know, Apple does that. They like to say they're the first to everything, even though somebody else has already done it. All right. So they talked about how great it was going to be for gaming and augmented reality. And, you know, they highlighted some really stunning photography, uh, and, and photos and pictures. They talked about the neural system capabilities, the HDR and the photography, the amazing post-processing, uh, you know, aperture modification controls, stuff like that. Um, so that was kind of their focus. They mentioned that it is IP68 water resistant, which means it's going to be a little bit more water resistant than the previous generations, uh, which was IP67. Uh, the stereo speakers, it's going to record in stereo audio and it's going to play in full stereo audio, which is great. So it should sound really, really good. Um, I think, you know, all of that is great. These are really some good features. Uh, you know, the, the fact that the X10, or excuse me, the 10S and the 10S Max uh, both use OLED panels. They, I mean, they're pretty loaded. The colors, they're going to be gold, uh, which is a new color. They're going to offer silver and gray. I mean, it seems like a pretty good package. At the event, they talked a lot about how their facilities are running on renewable energies and solar panels, servers run on clean energy. You know, Apple kind of doing their Apple thing. Um, whatever. They talked about how durable the glass was going to be. This... These new phones are basically glass sandwiches, right? They're gonna be have wireless charging and stuff like that. So uh, they also talked about the Apple Give Back program where you just send them your old iPhone and they'll give you value for it or they'll recycle it if it's too far gone. Um, so whatever. Now at the end of the uh, announcement, that's when they talked about the iPhone XR. Uh, it is going to be an aluminum phone. It's not gonna use the stainless steel that the other two phones have. Uh, they did talk about how durable the glass was for this one. Colors offered for the XR are going to be white, black, Black, blue, coral, yellow. Um, so you definitely have some color options there. They are going to offer uh, that really, really uh, special red edition pro uh, product red. Uh, it is going to have a glass back. It is going to utilize edge to edge display. Uh, remember, it is a glass sandwich, front and back glass. Um, they're saying it is going to have very durable glass, so I guess that's good. Uh, this uh, cheaper iPhone is going to have IP67 rating, not the 68 of the other two. It's going to be a 720p plus uh, LCD display. Uh, the others are going to be more like a 1080p plus display. Um, there's slightly more display, display bezel with the... Um, the iPhone 10 R, unfortunately, because they're using LCD, it's a much harder uh, technology to kind of perfect. And, and they did a good job with it. I will give it that. I mean, they're calling it the liquid retina display. Um, from what I understand, that is also going to be a dual SIM, but not 
going to be eSIM compatible. So, and it's also gonna have a single rear camera as opposed to the XS and the XS Max, which will be dual cameras on the back. Uh, one will be for depth perception and the other a wide angle lens. Now in terms of pricing on the cheaper one, that one is coming in at 749 for the 64 gig. Uh, it says TBA for the 256 gig, TB, uh, TBA for the 128 gig, so we don't have a price on that, and no 512 gigabyte variant. That makes sense. It's supposed to be budget. Uh, Pre-orders on that start October 19th, and available in stores October 26th. So they won't be ready uh, for the launch, but they'll be ready in about a month or so. Uh, so now let's get to the good part as it pertains to the carriers. We are expecting to see gigabit speeds out of the XS and XS Max models but we will not see Gigabit LTE with the R model. Uh, all models will be compatible with T-Mobile Band 71 and T-Mobile Band 66. Uh, there's also Band 14 support for AT&T, which is good. And actually, I was able to find here, uh, you guys can see on the screencast there, you can see that the bands are supported. Now, that does say that there's going to be two variants for the iPhone XS and the iPhone XS Max. So there's going to be a GSM variant, which will probably be sold in T-Mobile and AT&T stores, and then the CDMA variant sold with Sprint and Verizon. Uh, the unlocked model that you would buy from the Apple Store would probably also be the CDMA variant, so that's going to be the name, A1920 uh, CDMA variant for both of those. And you could see band two, band four, uh, band 12, band 13, band 14. Those are the important ones, band 17. And then at the bottom for 18 or for T-Mobile band 66, which gets you that fast speed with T-Mobile, uh, where the added capacity is needed in certain areas. And then band 71, the extended range LTE for T-Mobile. So that's good news that they have, uh, those capabilities. So, um, other, in other news, Apple's discontinuing production of the 6S, the SE, and the 10. They're still going to offer the 7, the 7 Plus, the 8, and the A Plus. So if you like the home button, if you like the way of the old design with the LCD display and the, and the home button, and you don't like gesture navigation, you can still get you know, a couple of devices, the 7, the 7 Plus, the 8, the A Plus, that have that outdated technology, the older uh, design. Uh, they also announced the new Apple Watch focuses on fitness and health monitoring. It's got a new design. It's still ugly in my opinion. They're going to be selling it for $399 uh, for the non-LTE version and for LTE connectivity will set you back $499. So it's going to have a larger display, a new processor that's supposed to be more capable, enhanced battery life. Uh, old bands are still compatible with it, so they are. Uh, there's a perk there, but that's that's pretty much it from the announcement. So, with all of that, you know, said, uh, what do you guys think of these products that they're offering? What do you think of the price points? Um, to be honest with you, in terms of the hardware, the phones have tons and tons of features. I think it's very very rich in terms of that, but they are really really expensive. I'm personally not one of those people that's going to willingly want to spend $1,000 on an iPhone. I'm also not a person who thinks $749 for an entry-level iPhone is a bargain. I think that's a very expensive price. I think if Galaxy continues to sell their Galaxy S line at about $699 and $749, you know, Apple is always going to be... Uh, you know, not as good a value as, say, the, the Galaxy S9, S10 for that line of devices. But, you know, the $1,000 phone is a real thing, and, and Apple's sticking with it. They want to remain the most profitable com uh, company in the world. They're doing so using this marketing strategy, and they're really good at it, and people continue to buy their products. So let me know if you're thinking about getting any of these phones. It looks like they're going to be great performing. It looks like the camera technology is excellent. It seems like they've made enough improvements to make people want to upgrade. I think especially if you're coming out of an 8 or an 8 Plus or a 7 or a 7 Plus, it may make a lot of sense to get this device. Well, that's it for this one. Very long-winded explanation. That's a lot. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this announcement and all these devices and their features in the comment section below. Tell me your thoughts and opinions on the pricing. Tell me if you're interested. I'll see you guys there. So thank you for watching. Please make sure that you rate the video, subscribe to the channel, ding the bell to be notified whenever I upload new content. This is Steve from Steve Mobile Tech, and I will see you all on the next video. Peace.